I posted a few videos, one on how to make a kunai rope dart, one on how to make this practice rope dart, and since then, for the last two months, I've been tinkering with different materials, different types of knots, so I just wanted to post this video on what I think is the best way to make a rope dart or a practice rope dart. Uh, number one, your dart should be a rubber ball. I like the Kong rubber balls because they're so dense that the screw eye will stick in, but I also recommend going for something lighter because if you practice with a lighter dart, you help build speed. If you practice with a heavier dart, then you build arm strength. The, the lighter rope dart, I actually use Use this when I first learned a technique because it doesn't really hurt as much compared to like the Kong ball. Using something light, this is like a three ounce chuck it ball dog toy. The screw eye pops out, it just eventually will. This one just has black paracord around it, and I end up just weaving paracord just in this random manner all around it. Anyhow, make sure your screw eye is secure, do it by tape or by rope. I showed this in my most recent video how to make the chain portion using welded o rings. And I really like it, it works very well. The O-rings show no signs of splitting open just because, I mean, they were really tough to open up. Depending on the rope you use, your rope might twist a lot. And one thing I decided to use was this swivel D-ring. It really does alleviate some of that twisting. I suggest that, but it's really not necessary if you have the right type of rope. When I first made that Kanai Rope Dart video, I used a square flag. But when I watched more videos, I found that the flags didn't look like a square, it looked more like a rectangle. So what I did was cut out a 19 by 8 inch rectangle, and then I just threaded it through the hitch. So some people will ask, like, well, why do you need a flag? When you're looking at it, the flag will cover the dart, but when you're spinning it around and you pop it out, you can see that dart emerge. For the flag, what I like about it personally is that you can tell how fast the dart is moving by the sound. But if I go really fast, then you could hear the flag. In addition, it helps you spot where the dart is. If you are getting a flag more for sound, then you don't want something as permeable as this yellow fabric that I have. I was going through the fabric section in Walmart and I was going through each fabric doing this and listening and seeing if it made a lot of noise. The satin material seems to work best. I've also tried this cotton material, but I really don't like the color because it's so dark. So if you're choosing a color, go for something that pops, that catches your eye. How to attach your rope to your dart. In my Kanai Rope Dart video, I did something really complicated. I used a round turn, I used two half hitches, and then a square knot to secure the hitch. And really that was very complicated and unnecessary. One of my subscribers suggested that I use a buntline hitch and I read up a little bit about it and I was sold. It's prone to jamming and that's good because you don't, you want it to jam, you don't want it to come loose. You don't need anything else other than that hitch. So in the last few videos I posted, I showed how to make a hand loop using a bowline knot. And I was really happy and fine with it, but the downside to this loop is that this knot right here can be a bit bulky. And then when I started reading this book, it's called Soft Weapons, Nine Section Whip and Rope Dart, it actually showed you what the hand loop should look like. What it looked like was a tiny loop, and then you thread the other end of the rope to make an adjustable hand loop. And I was like, oh my God, it's so simple. And I really like it because this loop right here, it's loose and it's not as secure, or is this automatically just tightens up? Okay, next is ropes. Now I made the mistake of trusting a forum on what type of ropes to use. So I'm gonna show you every type of rope I use and the downside to it. The first rope I tried out was a nylon rope and it was a quarter inch in diameter, which seemed fine at first, but after a while it just seemed too thin, too small. I went up to 5 sixteenths of an inch and I like that diameter a lot better. Nice thing about nylon that it's, it's very smooth. However, there have been a couple times where when I was shooting it out, it just burned my finger. It like, just burned. And it's also prone to a lot of twisting. So I don't suggest using nylon. Sorry if you bought nylon rope. Secondly, I also went with cordelette rope. I bought three different ropes. I first bought 8mm, but 8mm seemed more verbal for my really heavy dart. Uh, so I went with 7mm. And the weird thing about the 7mm ropes, they're both from the same company, but the rope acts differently. It feels different. And I thought maybe it's because I didn't break this in as much, but it's just a different process or something, even though it should be exactly the same. Not to mention that because that rope is so stiff and so heavy, I just got a lot of bruises on the back of my arms from doing elbow turns. 
and I think it's because of the rope, I don't know, or maybe it's just my arms need some conditioning. But in any case, I thought I need to go try a different type of rope. So when I was reading this book, which is like probably the only material that said, go get a cotton rope. And I was like, well, I wish I knew that in the first place. So I had to look online. And when you look online, you have three different types of cotton ropes. You have cotton sash cord, which is used to open windows back in the day. And then you also have theater cord, which they sell only in bulk, 100 feet for like 30 bucks. Uh, and you also have bondage rope. And then I read the description, it was like soft on the hands, durable. And I was like, I'm in. I used it for like a couple weeks. After a while, I stopped not liking it. Even though it's the softest out of all the ropes I've tried out, it's not very well made. It's pilling like a bad sweater would pill. And this bondage rope stretches a lot. So when you're spinning it around depending on how fast you spin it it might start hitting the ground so I bit the bullet and I bought a hundred feet of theater cord I like it so far I've used it for a few days and I don't see any problems with it it doesn't twist very much it's uh, low stretch and it holds knots well uh, so I really like it and this is what I suggest if you're making a rope dart on your own so those are my suggestions on how to make the best practice rope dart. Stay tuned if you want to learn how I made this rope dart using cotton rope. First step is to tie a butt line hitch to the last link of your dart. Before I tighten the hitch, I threaded the flag between the hitch and the link. Next step is to estimate how long your rope should be. It should be as long as your arm span and to where the dart hovers over the ground. Since a picture in my book shows that the proper way to hold your rope dart is to wrap it once around your hand, right above the hand loop, I know that I'll need a bit of extra rope. So here I'm trying to replicate that wrapping plus the hand loop so I know where to cut my rope. Just use the picture in the corner as a reference. Using a butterfly clip to temporarily hold my hand loop, I tested to see if I had the correct rope length by swinging it around. Once I had the correct rope length, I placed tape where I wanted to cut the rope. The tape serves to ensure that the rope doesn't fray or unravel. You can keep the tape there, but for a permanent, cleaner look, you should try whipping the end as I've done here. There are different types of whippings to choose from. I chose a sail maker's whipping as it's very secure. I'll include a link to animatedknots.com, which has a slideshow and detailed instructions on how to complete this whipping. Once I completed the whipping, I cut off the excess rope. To make the hand loop, first I made a tiny loop that encircles the rope. It's kind of like making an eye splice, but not as pretty or as difficult. You can use tape to bind the loop, but I opted to use twine. Here I'm using my needle to thread twine through both ends of the rope. Then I wrap both ends like a figure eight. At the end of the wrapping, I thread the needle in one more time to secure the splice. You could probably stop there, but I decided to wrap the entire binding in both directions. Then I tied the loose ends of the twine, tucked it in, and fused the ends. This binding took about 8 feet of twine and your finished product should look like this. So hopefully that helps. In my next video I plan to show you all of the things I've learned in the last 3-ish months. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon. Bye! I bought this iPod Nano for trading purposes mostly. And what I did was I took Tom Fazio's Art of Sash DVD, I put it in my editing program, and then I cut his video into little sections and named each video by the drill name, it really helps because it gives you a frame of reference when I'm outside practicing